السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. السلام ورحمة الله. السلام looks like he doesn't he didn't even have breakfast. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وعليكم السلام. This salam sounds like it doesn't need lunch. الحمد لله. الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وعزيزنا محمد رسول الله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه وعلينا معهم برحمتك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى عز وجل في القرآن المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظا قلب لانفضوا من حولك فاعف عنهم واستغفر لهم وشاورهم في الأمر فإذا عزمت فتوكل على الله إن الله يحب المتوكلين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من لا يرحم لا يرحم When we commonly think of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم we think of the greatest man to have ever stepped on this earth. We say it. But for one moment, I want you to think about it. Imagine, and I will take you gradually up to that level, because in reality, it's impossible to even gradually reach the level of Rasulullah or even to make a mind subconsciously aware of the level of Rasulullah But as humans, we try. If, <coughs> mashallah, some big sheikh was to walk inside. Everyone, mashallah, would turn around, say, Salam, how are you? Come close to meet him. If the mayor of Danbury, you guys have a mayor here? Six X is big, I don't know. Uh, the mayor of Danbury walks in, everybody will come meet them, push the kids away till the kids stay quiet, don't talk too loudly. If the governor of Connecticut comes, a little more serious, people start flocking, you know, to keep it quiet. Only the, in the community, only the doctors, engineers, big people, they go and meet them. President Obama comes. Oh, everybody else aside, you know, it's Hato Bacho. We used to say in our Urdu language, Hato Bacho. Somebody's coming, everyone's moving everyone away. No, 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 big guy's coming. You have his, his people blocking everyone else. No, 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 president is coming. Nobody can meet him. Only from far away you can wave. A celebrity comes so far away you can wave. I was there for one sheikh's talk, one sheikh. And uh, after he finished his speech, he said, Everybody sit where you are. I need to leave. Nobody get up and say salam. So I thought to myself, I said, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa never did this. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa was the biggest sheikh. No person ever, no matter how much, how many people came and met Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There were 100,000 people on Hajj with him. Every one of the 100,000 wants to meet him. I don't think any speaker has 100,000 people that every one of those 100,000 wants to meet him. Yes, you might have a couple of hundred thousand in your speech, but not everyone wants to meet you. People just say, Salaam, mashallah, good speech, and walk out. Nobody has time for this. Meet the sheikh, wait in line. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 100,000, but still, he gave his time for every single person. Now, I want you to think of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The same man 
who was the Sheikh of Sheikh, King of Kings. He was the greatest man to ever walk. The man whom even the angels wished to be in proximity with him. This man would go. And even he used to say salam upon children. Allah says in the Quran, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It was through the mercy of Allah that Allah made you soft, O oh my Nabi, O oh Muhammad Arabi. It was through the mercy of Allah that He made you soft. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ Had you been stern and had you been a rough, rigid person, لَن فَضْلُوا مِنْ حَوْلِكْ People would have run away from you. Take this one ayah. Fit it in any sphere of your life, and your life is solved. Let me say it again. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ It was through the mercy of Allah that He brought softness and gentleness in you. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ O Muhammad Arabi, if you were stern, rigid, لَن فَضْلُوا مِنْ حَوْلِكْ They would never become Muslim. They would never come close. Today we see in our communities, Common question everyone is asking. Why are our children running away from the masjid? Why are people not coming to the masjid? Why is the masjid not being populated? What's wrong? Is the masjid, oh, we know our masjid is small. Wallahi, masjid al Nabi was smaller. Masjid al Nabi was smaller than this masjid of yours right now. How many stuff are here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probably 14 stuffs here. Masjid al Nabi was even smaller than this. But masjid al Nabi was still more packed than this. Why? فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ There was an atmosphere. There was gentleness was adopted. There was, I was mentioning either in the Q&A or in last night's event, a person walks into the masjid, starts urinating in the masjid. Starts urinating in the masjid. We're not talking about a person, a kid, who's on his cell phone. We're not talking about a child who walks in with shorts in the masjid. We're not talking about a youth who is, who is uh, chit-chatting in the back of the masjid. Yes, there's ways to explain. Yes, it is wrong. But the way to get across to them. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa comes to sahaba see which masjid, not even any masjid, the masjid of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The ulama have written, and it is a consensus of fact, that masjid al-Nabawi, where the area Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa is buried. Every man is buried where? Where his dirt was taken from, right? Famous story we all know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Jibreel alayhi salam, go to the earth and go get me dirt. So Jibreel alayhi salam came to the earth, went to get dirt, and the earth said, بِعِزَّةِ Rabbi wa bijalalihi. I swear to you on the honor of Allah, and I beseech you from the glory of Allah, do not take dirt from me. Why? He said, a nation was here before, and I fear another nation will come. They will take this dirt from me, and the men will be created, and these same men will anger my Allah, and these same men will disobey my Allah. I do not wish to be a contributor to another nation, to another creation that will disobey my Allah. Please, I beseech you, do not take dirt from me. Jibreel Amin alayhi salam says, O oh earth, I will ask Allah. If Allah tells me to come back, I will come back. I will take your request to Allah, but if Allah tells me to come back, then I won't listen to you. He goes back. Did you bring the earth? Did you bring the dirt? No, ya Allah, the earth started beseeching me with your honor and started take, making promises. So, okay. <coughs> Mikael, you go. Mikael goes, searches the earth to grab dirt. Bi'izzati Rabbi wa bi jalalihi. I swear to you on the honor of Allah, and I swear to you on the grandeur of Allah, I beseech you, do not take dirt from me. I fear that if you were to take dirt from me, a nation would come that would disobey and anger and bring down the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They say, لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا مِّنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ Allah says, had we revealed this Qur'an upon a mountain, <coughs> لَوْ أَنزَلْنَا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ عَلَىٰ جَبَلٍ لَرَأَيْتَهُ خَاشِعًا مُتَصَدِّعًا You would see the mountain become ashes. The mountains fear Allah. The earth fears Allah. The Qur'an is read over and over again. The hadith of Rasulullah are heard over and over again. Are our hearts harder than the mountain that our hearts don't get soft? 
What is wrong with us that our hearts don't get penetrated? But if the Quran was on a mountain, the mountain would be penetrated. The earth fears Allah. The earth, we, the same earth we walk upon in sin in front of Allah. This is the same earth that fears Allah. These words are not just for you. My ears are closer to my mouth than anyone else. Going back, Mikael says the same thing. I will take your complaint to Allah. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will grant you your permission. And if not, I will come back and fulfill Allah's request. Goes to Allah. Mikael, did you bring the dirt? No, Ya Allah, the earth beseeched me and it asked me and it, 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 it took oaths and it said that a nation would come that would disobey you and I wanted to bring it up to you, Ya Allah. Allah SWT said, okay, Israfil, you go. Goes down. Rabbi wa bijalalihi. With the honor of Allah and the grandeur of Allah, I beseech you, don't do this. I'm going to go back to Allah and ask him. If he tells me come back, I will come back and I will take the dirt. Goes back to Allah, Israfil, what happened? Ya Allah, you know, I was about to take the dirt. And again, he started beseeching me and he started taking oaths. No problem. Tells the angel of <coughs> death, Israel. The three angels, Jibrail, Mikael, Israfil, their names are found in Quran and Hadith. Their names are found in Quran. Jibrail, Mikael is in Quran. Israfil is in Hadith. And uh, Jibr means Abd. Il means Allah. Alama Alusi rahimallah in Ruh al Ma'ani writes, Jibrail means Abdullah, the slave of Allah. Mikail means slave of Allah. Israfil means slave of Allah. Israel, the name of the angel of death, is found in the book Ahl uh, in the Bible and uh, uh, Torah. And from their scriptures, the name Israel is found. Allah tells him, Go to the earth, collect the dirt. Go find the dirt and collect it. He goes to the earth, the earth says, Bi izzati rabbi wa bi jalalihi. We beseech you. From the grandeur of Allah, and we beseech you from the glory of Allah, do not take dirt from us. He said, O oh earth, my fidelity and my loyalty lies with Allah above yours. I understand that. I am requesting you to go and ask Allah and put this matter in front of Allah. I know you're requesting me this request, but still I must fulfill the commandment of Allah first. I know you must fulfill the commandment, but just ask Allah one more time. No. I, Allah said, take the dirt, I will take the dirt. Comes back up. Did you get the dirt? Yes, I did. Since you were the one that was able to get the dirt and create them, I will also make you the one that will take their souls away. Our teacher, Hazrat Mufti Sahib, used to say, the time of death is unknown. The place of death is unknown. Allah even made the name of the angel of death unknown. Quran, Haditha, Jibrail, and Mikail. Israfil, three angels are found in Quran and Hadith, but the angel of death's name is not found anywhere. He said the time of death is unknown, the place of death is unknown, even the name of the angel of death is unknown. Going back, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the most respected and honorable person, Gana yusallimu ala sibyan, used to come. So the dirt, so I was saying about the dirt. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is Khairul Makhluq. So he was born from where? The dirt where he was created, right? Where, you, where a person is buried, that is the dirt they were created from. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is buried in Madinah Munawwara. It, it is a known fact and a consensus that the dirt that touches Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's body is more virtuous than the Arsh of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Than even the throne of Allah. And I'll explain to you why. Is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a creator or a creation? Creation. Is the throne of Allah a creator or a creation? It's a creation. What is the best creation that Allah created? So between the two creations, which one is better? Do you understand? That the dirt that is adjacent to Rasulullah, when you stand in front of Masjid al-Nabawi, that area you're standing in front of is more virtuous than the throne of Allah because Allah created the throne and Allah created Rasulullah. And out of both makhluq, out of both creations, this one is more virtuous. Hence, the dirt that is adjacent, since it was made from that dirt, is more virtuous than the throne of Allah. In, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi is buried where? In the house of Aisha, adjacent to the Masjid al-Nabawi. Imagine the, the maqam of that Masjid. Person comes and starts urinating on the side. If it was you and I, what would we say? 911. Or if some brother's zealous, he says, You know what, today's my day. I'm going to pick my sleeves up and I'm going to show them. Mujahid. You're going to go. And, what did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? Okay, grabbed his shawl. 
No, Sahaba came to race towards him, to hit him. No, stop, stop. Covered him and waited for him to complete what he was doing. After finish, he said, listen, this is our masjid. In our masjid, we don't do these kind of things. We don't, do, we, we don't urinate like this. Come, protected their sin. What do you and I do? You want to ask me today why our children have lost their integrity? Why they don't listen to their parents? Why they don't have any trust issues? It's because the moment they do something wrong, we exploit them and we degrade them. They get fed up and they completely turn away from us. I, went, I had a teacher as a Mufti Muhammad Ali. I have been across the world. I've lived amongst many people. In my life, I have never seen only one more place have I seen a family, but I've never seen children more virtuous than his children. We don't praise anyone in front of Allah. However, everyone has children, right? Yeah, mashallah, one pious kid. I was, at a, I, was, I was somewhere recently where one sister was an alima and the other siblings were, mashallah, they could star for Bollywood. Something, you always get that one bad apple, you know, to, you know no, all the kids aren't made the same. All the fingers aren't the same. All the kids aren't the same. This man had six children or seven. Every one of them exemplary, perfect kids. Intelligent, uh, well-mannered. Uh, kids loved them. Teachers loved them. Everybody loved them. From the youngest to the oldest. Every person loved them. And the most uh, uh, real kids, the most uh, humble kids, the most uh, uh, well-spirited kids. So I asked him one day, and the father is just the same. The sweetest teacher we had, Mufti Muhammad Ali. You know, you didn't learn your stuff in class. You'd be like, okay, stand up, do 10 sit-ups. You know, and he would be laughing half the way through the 10 sit-ups. And the kids are laughing, you know, and he was one of the sweetest teachers we had. Uh, I asked him once, I said, Mufti Saab, what is the key to raise good children? I said straight up, I said, you know, everybody got that one kid that screwed up. Mashallah, you, you somehow got all of them straight. How'd you do it? So he said, children and people have this innate ghayra and modesty in their hearts. When they do something wrong, the fear is, is that people will know about my wrong. If you expose them right away, they lose their haya and ghayra. Therefore, they never fear retribution again. If they, for example, he gave an example of watching TV, he said, you see as your child watching TV, he knows it's wrong. Instead of telling him at that very moment, you wait. Act like you didn't see it. Ignore it. Wait two, three weeks later. It's because at that moment when he sees you see him doing the wrong thing, he's in a heightened state of emotion. He's fearful at the same time, yet he wants to protect himself at the same time. So when you try correcting him, he starts arguing back with you and it turns into a bad dilemma. He said, wait one, two weeks, let the situation simmer down. When the kid is conscious again, and he's well aware, drop it in on him. Gently and lightly, without, without telling him off. And then you'll see the kid will subconsciously understand this. What did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? Hit him. He hit, he hit the person urinating. What do we do? We expose, we find out, oh, your child did something wrong. Okay, go tell him. Tell the whole community. There was once a scholar. His name was, he was nicknamed Asam, the deaf one. Imam Tirmidhi rahmatullah and them narrate from him. They nicknamed him the deaf one. One time he was sitting down and he was giving a lecture. A woman came and asked him a question. As she was asking him a question, she began to pass gas. When she passed the gas, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was loud and uh, she, she, she thought that, you know, he heard it and she felt embarrassed. If a guy passes gas in public, you'll feel embarrassed. Imagine, imagine a woman. They have more haya than us, generally speaking. Yesterday, one of the brothers was here. And he was like, when, he was like back when I was in school, the clothes were up to, he pointed towards his ankle. So the clothes were down, up to, uh, down to here. It's like every year, it started going up. So, Assam stood there and he said, I'm sorry. Could you repeat your question again? So she said the question louder. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Can you repeat it a little louder again? Ah, my ear. 
So she said the question even louder. Forgive me, forgive me, you know. Could you say it a little louder, please? So she said the question so loud that she, had, she knew guaranteed that it was impossible for him to hear my passing guess. Not only that, when she left, he said that if she finds out later on that I was making, I was making this up, she's going to feel embarrassed. He carried that on for the rest of his life to the point people started calling him the deaf muhaddith and the deaf scholar. And not only till the day he passed away did his students come and say, our teacher was never deaf, but he was protecting the honor of another Muslim. Our teacher was never deaf. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ one time Malik bin Dinar, great scholar, famous scholar, was walking and he saw children play. And we see this all the time. I came inside the room, everyone must say salam to me. Rasulullah sallallahu said, Al-Badi'u bis salam, bari'um min al-kibr. The one who incepts the salam, begins the salam, his heart is free from kibr. How many times do we walk by? How many of us walk around and say salam to the children? How many of us walk around and say salam? And the same thing, the children must say salam to the elders. It's not just a one-way track. But the reason I'm stressing on the children more is because it's easier to make the adults understand than make the children understand. But through your barakah, inshallah, the children will understand too. Malik bin Dinar says, I was walking by, I saw this kid playing with dirt. At times he was crying, at times he was laughing. At times he was crying, at times he was laughing. So I said, I'm not going to stop and say salam. I'm Malik bin Dinar. And this is just a little tatti playing with dirt. So he went on. Then he said, No, 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 no. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yusallimu ala subyan wa ala al kibar. He said, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say salam to the children and to the elders. Turned around, said, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. So the kid replied, Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu ya Malik ibn Dinar. So alaykum salam, Malik ibn Dinar <coughs> continues playing with his little dirt. So the kid, so he said to the kid, he said, Do you mind, since I already be, we began talking, do you mind if I indulge you in a little question, you know, a little riddle? Uh, you know, I ask you a little question. Make it, since I stopped and I'm asking, you know, why not? So he said, go on. He said, مَا الْفَرْقُ بَيْنَ الْعَقْلِ وَالنَّفْسِ مَا الْفَرْقُ بَيْنَ النَّفْسِ وَالْعَقْلِ He said, oh my child, tell me, what's the difference between nafs and aql? The carnal desire and aql and logic. So while playing, the kid said, النَّفْسُ الَّذِي مَنَعَتْكَ عَنِ السَّلَامِ وَالْعَقْلُ الَّذِي حَرَّذَكَ عَلَيْهِ He said, your nafs was the thing that prevented you from saying salam to me. But your aql and your logic was what made you, made you come back and say salam to me. He said, okay. He said, why do you cry? He said, why do you play with dirt? He said, I play with dirt because it's a constant reminder. Minha khalaqanakum wa minha wa minha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. It keeps us serious me as a constant reminder that I was here, and I will be in here, and I came from here, and I will be resurrected from here as well. So he said, فَلِمَاذَا tabki wa tadhak." Why is it that sometimes I see you cry and I see you laugh sometimes? Why is it I see you cry and I see you laugh sometimes? He said, when I remember the mercy of my Allah, I smile. When I think of my sins and my mistakes in front of Allah, I cry. <coughs> So Malik bin Dinar said, all right, mashallah, Sufi child, chill out there. What do you mean? I remember my sins and I start crying. All right, you just went a little too, too, too much for us. Right, come down to earth. What sins do you have? You know, if, you, if you're at 12 and making sins, you got more issues than I do. So the kid says, I saw my mother. When she kindles a fire, she puts the small pieces of wood in first. And then she puts the larger pieces of wood. 
So I fear that on the day of judgment, Allah might put me first and then put the bigger people on the channel first. This interaction, where did it come from? The story we learned, where did it come from? Stepping and interacting with our youth. Stepping and interacting with our youth. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's not haram to joke. It's not haram to make a, uh, 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 make a joke and laugh. You know, in our homes, we have, we have this persona. We walk into our house and that's it. We, you know, Adolf Hitler or Fir'aun could learn two, three lessons from us. We walk in home and everyone must be quiet. Every, you know, we're always angry. And I said the joke about the egg yesterday. We're always angry. Always want to prove a point. Yell at the kids. Food is not right. You know, tell the wife. She cooked food. You know, the salt is not right. She's a good wife. Sweet wife. Gentle. She'll be like, oh, okay, okay. I'll make it better next time. Well, salt's not good. If she's a little more four or five years into the marriage, three, four years into the marriage, she says, you know what? I'm never cooking this again. But if it's like 15, 20 years into the marriage, salt's not good. Yeah, next time we need to put salt in, I'm going to call you. <laughs> Different stages of marriage. We create this persona, we create these lives, whereas Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he goes into the house of Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, and he sees this child, his brother, playing around with this bird, and then the bird dies. So he comes to him and he says, teases him, he says, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'al al He says, what happened, man? Your bird's pretty, your bird, what did you do to your bird, man? It was all flappy and happy the, the last time I saw it, now it's all non-flappy and non-happy. Going and giving that time to them. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with our women at homes. We treat our women, especially in our Desi families. A woman is treated second class, you know. MashaAllah, I was once in a one speech, I went there and I said that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to help out in his household. He used to, you know, uh, help out with his, you know, the household chores. He was Nabi of Allah. He wasn't you and I. He was Nabi of Allah and he was helping our household. So some, guy, some person came to me afterwards and he was very furious. And he said, how could you say that? And I said, what do you mean? How could I say that? He said, he, oh, Rasulullah tha, ya, behind ya, chalate tha. So was he the messenger of Allah or was he there to cook? And I said, it has nothing to do with a person cooking or being the messenger of Allah. It has to do with his humanity. And it has to do with his personality. That you have some, a woman who's cooking two, three times a day, cleaning dishes, cleaning the house, and a man says, no, I eat my food, I put my plate, and I walk off. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to clean it. It's not my job. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came as rahmatun lil alameen, the mercy of all mankind. For the big, for the small, to the point I was at someone's house the other day, and they had cats in the house. So they asked me, they said, is it permissible to have cats? And I said, you speak of the permissibility of cats, let me indulge you with one hadith of Rasulullah. I said, my Nabi of Allah was such a rahmatul lil alameen that he is sitting down and he is doing wudu and drinking water. He sees a cat come down and he puts his bowl down for the cat to drink the water. And then continues. How many of us has, has, this, has this compassion for animals? You speak about environmentalists. You speak about going green. Wallahi, the first person to, to or, or the greatest person to advocate green, uh, 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 being, uh, uh, taking care of our environment and being aware of our environment was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me indulge you with another hadith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Al-Imanu bid'a'un wa sab'a'un shu'fa. Iman has 70 branches. Have you heard this hadith? If you heard this hadith, raise your hand. Afdaluha, what's the greatest branch? La ilaha illallah. Wa adanaha, what's the lowest branch? Imaatatul adha anit tariq. The removal of debris and dirt from the path. If the lowest level of iman is the one who removes litter, imagine the state of the iman of the person who puts the litter there. <coughs> If the lowest level of Iman is to remove the litter, imagine what the person is who puts the litter there. Where did Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Not only humans, not only children, not only women, not only animals, even the environment. Even the sacred environment. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, 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 don't go throwing on garbage. This is the lowest level of Iman. A Muslim doesn't do these things. 
When we speak about Islam, what do we do? We paint it. Look, they kill people, they murder people. No, no, no one talks about that. Oh, Muslims, they're, they're told not to uh, pollute. Muslims are told that they should be uh, uh, gentle with their wives and their family. Going back with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Some of us are always, the Nabi sallallahu said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. Every one of you has subordinates, has people under them, right? If you're a father, you have children. If you're a seventh grader, you have sixth graders, fifth graders, fourth graders. If you're a, a older brother, you have old, younger siblings. If you're 23 year olds, you have 18 year old kids, you know, in the masjid or in the community that look up to you. You know, you always have people that are your subordinates. When a person has this, enjoys this power, arrogance creeps in. And when arrogance creeps in, Allah snatches that position away from you. Wallahi, I don't want to go into details. But some instances I've seen with my own eyes where people were untouchable, had great things, untouchable, and overnight Allah took everything away from them. We even know, I don't even forget about these stories in Pakistan when the hurricane hit, tsunami hit, people said, Ham suete rat me amir, suba utete fakir. Rat suete ham zakat dete hue, suba utete zakat lete hue. He said, we went to sleep at night as rich people. We woke up in the morning as poor people. Overnight, their homes wiped out. Businesses wiped out. They said, we went to sleep at night giving zakat. We woke up in the morning accepting zakat. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There's a person by the name of Thumama bin Urthal from Yamama. He was a leader there. He killed some Muslims, he got caught, they brought him to Masjid Nabawi, they tied him to the pillar in Masjid Nabawi. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam comes and says, Ma ba luka ya Thumama. What's going on Thumama? How's everything? In mine, in your terminology, what's up? So he said, In taqtul taqtul da min, wa in tun'im tun'im ala shakirin, وَإِن تُرِدْ مَالًا فَسَلْ تُعْطَ مِنْهُمَا شِئْتْ He said, Oh, Muhammad Arabi, you want to kill me? You got the right to kill me, man. I killed many of yours, or in تَقْتُلْ تَقْتُلْ دَادَمٍ I'm an honorable man. You get, you, got, you get the blood of our honorable man. وَإِن تُنْعِمْ تُنْعِمْ عَلَى شَاكِرٍ If you let me go, I'll remember this. But if it is money you desire, ask and I'll give it to you. We saw some said, okay, let him stay. Next day, 24 hours later, comes back. Ma ba luka ya thumama. What's up, thumama? What's going on? Now he realized if Muhammad al Arabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to kill him, he would have killed him the first day. So he changed the order of the sentences. He said, In tun'im tun'im ala shakirin, wa in taqtul taqtul da damin, wa in turid malan fasal tu'tamin huma shit. He said, If you want to forgive me and free me, I will always remember this. But you want my neck, you deserve it. And if it's wealth you desire, ask me. I'm the leader of Yamama. I'll give you whatever you want. Okay. Third day. Thumama. Ma'abaluk. What's going on? Same thing. In tun'im tun'im ala shakirin wa in taqtul taqtul da'adamin wa in turid ma'alan fas'al tu'atamin huma shit. Whatever you want to ask. Death. You want my death? Kill me. You deserve it. I deserve it. And if you forgive me, I'll remember this. Okay, let him go. He left. You have power above them. Let him go. He left. Comes back a little while later. He left as a prisoner. Comes back a little while later as Thumama, as Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu. Water dripping from his beard, water dripping from his hand. He says, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Number one, he says, Ya Muhammad, ma kana ala wajhil ard, 
بلد ابغض الي من بلدك ولا دين ابغض الي من دينك ولا وجه ابغض الي من وجهك او محمد upon the face of this earth no land existed more detested and abhorred near me than your land no person no religion existed more detestable to me than your religion and no face did i hate more than your face والان ما كان على وجه الارض دينا احب دين احب الي من دين ولا بلد احب الي من بلدك ولا وجه احب الي من وجهك he says now muhammad arabi on the face of this earth no deen exists no religion exists more beautiful to me than your religion no land exists more beloved to me than your land no face exists more beloved to me than your face Three days in Masjid al-Nabawi, and this was the first person who did the first boycott. He did the first, uh, he started boycotting the Kufar of Makkah, uh, the Quraysh and the trade line. And then Quraysh had to beg Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, we could go on into details in this story. You have a man who hated Rasulullah, sat three days in his masjid, three days jamaat. You want to talk about jamaat? Three days jamaat. There's your dalil for it. Three days jamaat in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's masjid. That's fine, I gave you the dalil for three days jamaat. The, qual- the quantity I gave you the dalil for, but let me give you the dalil for the quality of that jamaat too. I gave you the dalil of that qu- quantity, but let me tell you of the quality. Three days in that masjid makes a man who hates the deen, love the deen. Makes that same man who hated Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who hated him, killed his followers, make a man a, a devout follower of him. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ Make your masjid like this. Don't come and say, brother, we need to do these things. No, build a quality in your masjid. You say, these kids, they'll never understand. They'll never... No, bring them the masjid. Show them the proper atmosphere. If the mama can become a رضي الله عنه, then your children can as well. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا قَلِيدًا قَلْبًا فَضًّا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ Let me tell you two steps ahead. Quraysh. They hate Rasulullah. They fought him. There's a battle going on. They're persecuting him. Thumama boycotts them. Their supplies begin to diminish. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and says, Thumama, stop the boycott. Thumama, stop the boycott. These people are going to starve to death. This is how he dealt with his enemies. If it was you and I in that position, we would say, we'll send them back to the Stone Age, man. We'll wipe them out. The Battle of Galilee, Henry VIII had completely taken over the castle of, of the French castle. Completely to the point that people were eating rats over there. Besieged them in such a manner. Maybe Salsam said, no, 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 no. Let them go. You know what? They're... they're they're humans at the end of the day. Humanity. Go to war. Don't kill the women and children. Your, 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 your battle is not with them. My time is almost done. I will say one incident and I'll finish off with this. The Quran was revealed. They said it was magic. And they said it was tales. One cup of water. I would love to stay, but I have two places to be after this. So I will, uh, I will say the last story, inshallah, and then I will leave. Quran, it's lies. One cup of water, sufficient for a whole jama'ah, you put magic on there. One cup of milk, you put magic on there. The moon is split in half, you've done magic. Badr, 313 people, poorly equipped, kill 1,000, armed to the teeth, magic. Uhud, magic. Khandaq, magic. Every time any miracle takes place, magic, 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 we don't believe it. Ninth year of Hijrah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
the most humblest conqueror this world has ever seen, with his head bowed down and a black turban, enters through the area where Bab al Fatih is in Haram. He has an army of 10,000 knives and swords ready to behead every man that ever spoke against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Every man that spoke against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 23 years later, the score is about to be, 22 years later, the score is about to be settled. I picked a bone with you 22 years ago. To the point, I made you leave your house. I made you, I made your children leave. I had your daughter get a miscarriage. Based on that, she died. Killed your uncle. Killed your friends. Made you come all the way here for Umrah, sent you back. Fought with you in battle. Today, this, our swords are above them. If you and I were in that position, what would we do? We'll make an example of them. So that history will know that this is how we deal with those who oppose us. <laughs> what did Rasulullah do? He stood up and he said, La tathriba alaykum He said, Today, I say to you what Yusuf said to his brothers. There's no blame upon you. What the Quran's rhetoric could not accomplish, what the splitting of the moon could not accomplish, what dozens of battles could not accomplish. What dozens of miracles could not accomplish. One sentiment. La tathriba alaykum al yawm. Caused the entire Makkah Mukarramah to say. A man with this compassion. A man with this humility. A man with this much, div, uh, div, uh, uh, this much love for his people. Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. And the entire Makkah Mukarramah became Muslim. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ To go on to this, I will, for five more minutes until they prepare the food, I'll say. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his mercy, there's a reason why Allah says, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ And Allah says, if you were not compassionate, people run away from you. Then Allah says, فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ let it go and forgive them. Because when a person is soft and nice, what happens? People take advantage of you. That's what Allah says, far for one home. Muhammad Ali, let it go. Now, how are they going to learn? How are they going to learn? Mashallah, you guys brothers. You guys know crying up all night. For the ummah. Where did that go? Where did that part go? Cry for the kids. Cry for the youth. Wallahi, let me tell you something. Ibn Batuta writes in his Muqaddimah. He said, I've traveled the world and I've learned one thing. If you want to destroy a nation, waging a war against them might be too much work. All you have to do is corrupt their youth. Corrupt the youth and the nation is destroyed. It has no future. Back in the day, cocaine. How was cocaine introduced? How was cocaine introduced? To make the indigenous African American children useless. And it was, crack was used and it was given to the, on the streets. To cripple the indigenous African American. These, these lights, these young kids, help them prosper. Help them get somewhere. It was a sunnah of my Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Musa bin Umair, radiallahu anhu, a small young chap, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent him to Medina Munawwar as the first teacher. Usama bin Zaid, he put him as the military leader and he was still a teenager in his late teens. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made him a military commander and Abu Bakr who said, you know what, after when he became Khalifa, he said, this is the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to dispatch this army. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam trusted the youth. Give them a chance. Guide them. Time is up. Uqabe ruh bedar hoti hai jab no javano mein. Uqabe ruh bedar hoti hai jab no javano mein. Dikti hai unku apni manzil asmano mein. Allah Iqbal says that the falcon of passion when it soars high in the youth, then the sky is not even the limit for them. The sky isn't even a limit for them. Give them the chance. Let them come forward. Make the masjid come. Make your masjid like a mother's arm. That these kids can come inside 
and feel safe inside here. Let me tell you something. Mufti Sab said something very beautiful last night. Depression is real. It takes place to the youth. How many suicidal kids have suicidal issues? How, how, how many of them become drug addicts? How many of them leave the Islam? How many, how many of them get caught up with some random girl based on depression? Make the masjid a place where they, can get, where they can come and get their spirituality. Wallahi, I was in China. And I had, I had Allah gave me the honor of praying in a masjid that was 1100 years old. I had the honor of praying in a masjid that was 1300 years old. With Hazrat Mufti Rada al-Hassa. In one of the masjids, there was a young boy, probably around Faisal's age. Came out, quietly came by us, and he said, where are you guys from? We said, oh, we're from uh, America, South Africa. He said, oh, okay, okay. He said, do dua for me. I said, why? He said, you know, we are, we're in a communist country. We're not allowed to learn deen over here. There's only, you tell kids, you don't have to pray. You don't have, there's no Quran, you don't have to do anything. How many of them will even turn towards Islam? He said, I'm one of the few kids that secretly goes to Raiwind and I study and I quietly, I have to learn the deen. I see I'm going for visit, I come back and then I have to quietly come and teach. Over there, I prayed Isha in the time of Maghrib. And I asked what's going on and they said, oh, over here we pray Isha early. When? The youth stopped coming, <coughs> then the elder people over there, they had no one to bring them fresh knowledge, to bring them actual knowledge. They stood there. I was there behind an imam who, wallahi, when he read Quran, I honestly thought he was speaking in Chinese. Wallahi. I was mind blown. A little while later, I met another imam. He spoke Arabic with me perfectly. His Arabic was way better than my Arabic. In the Egyptian dialect, I studied in the Azhar, this, this, and that. I said, Mashallah, in China, in the Majid in Jian. He said, My lead, lead uh, Isha is going to be in the Chinese way. I was like, What does that mean? I was like, Whatever, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I understood his Arabic wrong. Right? I prayed Allahu Akbar. Right? And then he could read Quran properly, but he read Quran in, 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 a, wrong, in a wrong form. Completely wrong form. Like, I, I, I've never heard of Quran in that way before. I haven't, even, I haven't even heard an American keep the Quran like that. And after he came back, he said, you know what? What can we do? Everyone is used to hearing Quran like this. We have no one to teach. No one there to learn correct from us. And if we start reading the correct way, people will say, we're wrong. People will say, we are wrong. Protect your masjids. Protect your next generation. No one else is going to be asked and held accountable for it besides you and me. The Sahaba had one slogan. Be like us. On the day of judgment, if the barra alladina tabaru, right? Tubiru? If the barra alladina tubiru min alladina tabaru, wara awul adaba wa taqatta akbihimul asbab. On the day of judgment, they will say, Oh my Allah, these were our parents who should have guided us towards the right path. They did it. Put them in Jahannam first. Had they guided us correctly, we would have never gone astray. Put them in Jahannam first. Give them double the adab you're giving us. We ask ourselves always, what will my children do after I die? What will my children do after I die? The real question is, what will your children do after they die? Create an atmosphere for them. Create an environment for them. Let them feel comfortable. Let them come to this masjid. And tomorrow, this masjid will grow and great things will happen. Not just, I'm not specifically saying this masjid. Anywhere you are, this is my live stream. So anywhere you are, the point is, is create a comfortable area for the youth, for the young generation. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi was compassionate. He said, those who don't have mercy, Allah doesn't have mercy on them. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair. I really want to thank Brother Imran, uh, Brother Adil, uh, and all the organizers here. Uh, and the Danbury community for hosting us and hosting this program. MashaAllah, uh, we really enjoyed coming here. Uh, you know, I thank uh, Mufti Farhan Saab and the rest of the ulama for also allowing me the opportunity of coming as well. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, first and foremost give me the ability upon, uh, to act upon whatever has been said and uh, accepts what has been said. Any mistakes or any errors uh, is from me and me alone and shaitan. Uh, may Allah forgive them and uh, uh, I bid you all salam inshaAllah.